why is the senator from Texas here today? To say to the president, we need to talk. But what does the president say? He says, my way or the highway. When the American people said they want dialogue between Republicans and Democrats, how do we get there? We have to stand up for what we believe in so they will come and talk. That was Senator Rand Paul standing with his Republican colleague, Texas Senator Ted Cruz, last night and early this morning. Joining me now live from Washington, Kentucky lawmaker, Senator Rand Paul. How are you, sir? Welcome back to the program. You must be a little, I'm a little tired because I was up watching you guys late last night and early this morning. So I assume you're, you're a little <laughs> tired today. Well, I think Ted did all the heavy lifting. I was the supporting cast. I was glad to be there some, but Ted Cruz deserves the credit for one heck of a long speech. Well, it was not. What time did you finally leave last night? Because I know you were back there by 6 a.m. this morning, right? Well, I was there early, but really, Mike Lee and Ted Lee deserve Ted, Ted Cruz and Mike Lee deserve the credit. They put most of the work in. The rest of us tried to support when we could, but they deserve most of the credit. All right. Before we get to the substance of this, you you are now known for your own filibuster. The rules are pretty tough. You have to stand the whole time. No eating in the Senate chamber. Um, you can't go to the bathroom. You have to be very technical in terms of the words you use so you don't give up control of the floor. Um, that's a long time not going to the bathroom. Uh, uh, are, are certain, let's say, preventative measures made in cases like that? What do you guys do? Do you, do you dehydrate yourself before you do this? Uh, I'm not going there. <laughs> you know, I, I don't. I don't know and have any answer to anything about that, other than to say that I did have to stop because that was my reason for stopping. Right. Because nature was calling me, and that's why I stopped. Thank you for sharing, Senator. We really appreciate it here. Um, all right. On a substantive note, um, there on the one hand was really great excitement among conservatives watching this last night, saying, "There's somebody who's fighting," just like when you did it, and then. You see what the, where the other the, the rest of the Republicans are in this, and they're saying no, we're gonna we're gonna vote for cloture, which will then allow Harry Reid to strip the defunding measure from the House CR, and and that means that it's gonna go back to the House without that. That's disappointing a lot of people. Why won't they stand with you and Cruz and Marco and and Mike? Here's what I would say: is that I've been traveling the country a lot. And everywhere I go, people want, you know, Republicans to win, conservatives to win. I tell them we need passion. So what you saw with Ted Cruz leading it, Mike Lee leading this, was passion. People sorely want us to stand up. For example, Benghazi. They're like, why won't someone stand up and speak truth to Hillary Clinton and ask her, did you order the Marines not to support our soldiers? People want answers, but they want someone who believes in something, who's unafraid to stand up and fight. And I think that's what Ted and Mike showed in okay, this. Okay, but, they're, but they're, they're asking, where are the rest of the Republicans here? Every Republican I know ran to repeal Obamacare. Now, I keep hearing that there are tactical differences. That's what I keep hearing. But it seems to me the tactical difference is, well, we can't do it now because we're going to be blamed for shutting down the government. So we'll elect us in 2014, and then in January in 2015, then we might be able to do something when we have the House and the Senate. Well, by that time, I think it's going to be impossible to do anything. You know, ultimately, I don't think it's a good idea to shut down government either. I'm not going to vote for one penny for Obamacare. I won't. I'm not going to vote for any spending bill that has money in it. But I also just don't want to shut down government because I think the disruptive nature of it and I don't think it's our fault, frankly. The president says, oh, Republicans, they want 100 percent of what they want or they'll shut down government. It's actually completely the opposite. The president wants 100 percent of Obamacare or he's going to shut the place down. But, they, but won't Senator, even allow, they won't even allow one amendment to modify Obamacare on the floor. But I don't see the Democrats engaged in this fear. They, they see the Republicans blinking. And they're just getting more emboldened and stronger by it. Why don't you guys put it on them? Pass the bill, fund the government, don't fund Obamacare, and say if you want to shut it down, shut it down. Why not? Why not? Is this not, <laughs> is this not worth taking a stand on? Well, I think it is worth taking a stand. And I absolutely want to take a stand. No more money for Obamacare. But at the same time, I think that 
when we're trying to grow our party, it could disrupt and distract us if government shuts down and Social Security checks in and checks the soldiers in. So I don't want either situation. And I think really that by standing on principle, what Ted Cruz and Mike Lee did, standing on principle, maybe we force them to get rid of some of the worst parts of Obamacare. Maybe we don't ultimately win. All I'm being is a realist. Maybe we don't ultimately win, but what we say is, Maybe we get rid of the, the medical devices tax. Maybe we get rid of the insurance tax. I, I Maybe think we get I rid of the individual the point, mandate. Though. I think what a lot of people want is for Republicans to fight, and meaning all of you. And it seems like this tactical difference, it's either now you stand up and you, you, you risk what the media and risk what the left will say about you being guilty of shutting down the government, or you wait till 2015 after an election that you may or may not win and you still have Obama as president. That's, that's right. the difference. That's what I see the two choices as. Maybe, but I think it's also important to say and to know that we are also battling against Democrats who are for funding Obamacare. Even with the differences within our caucus, and there are some, every Republican in our caucus is for defunding Obamacare. And I don't think it's fair to characterize some of them and say, oh, well, they're really for Obamacare. None of them are for Obamacare. I'm not saying that, they but do I, they're not willing to I'm fight. I'm not saying you are. And take I'm it not to saying the you mat. are. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not saying you are. I'm just saying that it's not fair to characterize people that you way. You see, you're willing to take it to the mat. Wait a minute. You're willing to, you're willing to stand with Cruz. Uh, I Mike Lee is coming up, is willing to stand. I'm just, I'm asking, where are the other 39 or 38 Republicans? Where are they? You know, I guess the, I guess what I'm trying to say, what's most important is, where are the seven or eight Democrats are going to vote to fund Obamacare that really I don't really expect them to do the, the right thing. I, I, well, I know they're not going to, but I'd like to see them gone. They didn't run on repealing Obamacare. So they, I think we need to direct some of our venom or some of our, you know, anticipation and trying to make things different towards getting rid of some of the voices that really are the, the problem right. here. And the problem is too many Democrats. Yeah, that, that, that. <laughs> That's a big problem. I agree. Uh, all right. Good to see you, Senator. Thank you. Thanks, Get John. some sleep tonight. Coming uh, up next.